Good morning and welcome to the Lost and Found Sunday School class. And our Sunday School lesson this week continues from the book of Daniel. But before we get started in that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning so thankful that we are able to be here and to worship with others, even though it is remotely. Lord, I hope that even through the miracles of technology that are, we can reach out to our fellow class members and church members and, and stay involved and keep them involved in the church and in worship. We thank you, Father, for the opportunities to worship that you do give us. Lord, help us to be faithful to those as we strive to overcome this pandemic. We thank you, Father, for the healings we see. We continue to pray for Sarah Underwood and, and her health. Father, there's others. We pray for Miss June and her continued grieving and overcoming the loss of Mr. Holland. We thank you, God, for the many, many ways that you have blessed us individually and collectively and we ask we seek lord your blessing to continue as we try to serve you daily in christ's name we ask these things amen well we're back in daniel again for this week and daniel is as we learned last week is a very fascinating book it's a book that is would stand on its own as a work of literature if it were not in the bible and we find some interesting facts about uh, Daniel that I want to share with you today. And uh, the first one is, is that it was written in two different languages. Some of the chapters were written in Aramaic and some of the chapters were written in Hebrew. And it's not based upon, when you look at Daniel, it's really almost two books. One of them is the first six chapters. And they're the stories of Daniel and the uh, and how he how he and and others withstood their time in Babylon, and the others the other is an apocalyptic excuse me apocalyptic book about what's going to happen in the future, and it's the first six chapters are fascinating reading, and but the second six chapters are also and so. If you have the opportunity, I would encourage you to read Daniel. It's a fascinating, it's deep, it's it's a hard to understand, but it's also very enlightening. Uh, and so if you have the opportunity, look into Daniel. So today, last week we were in Daniel 1, and we saw that through his faithfulness to God, Daniel was blessed. And this week, we're going to see how, even in the face of persecution, we can continue to be faithful. So, in between, after Daniel revealed and proved themselves to God, Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon, failed to recognize that. And then in chapter two, Daniel interprets a dream that says that Dan Nebuchadnezzar is in a place of great power right now. And how that affected Nebuchadnezzar was, he decides the thing for him to do is to build a gold statue to himself. And so he does, 90 feet high. My goodness. Takes a lot of gold to build something 90 feet high and nine feet wide. He set it up in a plain in the province of Babylon. And he sent word to everyone in the, in the, that he controlled, and Babylon was a big nation, that they were to bow down and worship this statue. And so the Chaldeans, the people of Babylon, were jealous of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego because they had been placed in power in places of power. 
And so to overcome that, the Chaldeans seized upon Nebuchadnezzar's ego and has encouraged them to came to the king and said, because these folks have said they're not going to bow down. And so that's where we find our scripture this morning. And it made Nebuchadnezzar mad, another proof of his ego. If we look forward from this chapter, we would see that Nebuchadnezzar goes mad. And it is not until he comes to his senses and starts worshiping the Jewish God, Yahweh, that he gain, regains his, his senses. So we find that Nebuchadnezzar has issued this order that everybody's got to bow down and worship. And if not, they're going to be thrown into a furnace. Folks, this is a, a, a very common story. We, as children, we get to watch the pictures of this as it shows them in the fire. And so it'd be easy for us just to kind of blow through this, but this is, this is how we can withstand prosecu or persecution. Now we, at the First United Methodist Church in Brookhaven, we don't suffer much persecution because of our religion. But it's here, it's in the, it's, it's, there are places that people are ridiculed for their religion. There's places that people are persecuted for their religion in our world. And a lot of them have made their way here. And a lot of them have, there are a lot of people who would have a story to tell about the persecution they suffered because of their, uh, because of their beliefs. And that's where the truths of this lesson are today is that God stays with us through that. He might not protect us and it might not turn out like this lesson did, but it will, it will turn out. So let's turn now to, to uh, the third chapter of Daniel and starting with verses 19. Well, I'm not going to start with 19. I'm going to back up and give you what some folks say is a true story here. Listen to Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego as they, re as they address the king in chapter, in chapter 3, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to give you an answer to this question. If the God we serve exists, then he can rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he can rescue us from the power of you, the king. But even if he does not rescue us, we want you to as king to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the gold statue you set up. That's verses 16 through 18, and that brings us to the story. But that's the story right there, that the three refused to bow down and worship other gods. An interesting thing is for us to define worship. Let me see if I can do that for you on the internet. Well, I missed it. I... There's two acts that go with worship. The first act is believing. And on an understanding of God's nature and valuing his worth. But the second act is what you do with that, is taking it from here into the world. That requires sacrifice. What do you do to further the kingdom? Or as James said, faith without works is dead. So let's go now and read the scripture of today and see if we can not draw some truths that we can apply to our life. So we find the Nebuchadnezzar and he is filled with rage. 
and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave orders to heat the furnace seven times more than was customary. He commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So these men, in their trousers, robes, and head coverings, and other clothes, were tied up and thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Since the king's command was so urgent and the furnace extremely hot, the raging flames killed those men who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, fell bound into the furnace of the blazing fire. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in alarm and he said to his advisors, didn't we throw three men bound into the fire? Yes, of course, your majesty, they replied to the king. He exclaimed, look, I see four men, not tied, walking around in the fire unarmed, unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace and blazing fire and called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come out. So Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego came out of the fire. When the <clears throat> king's advisors gathered around, they saw that the fire had had no effect on the bodies of these men, not a hair on their heads was singed, their robes were unaffected, and there was no smell of fire on them. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel and rescued his servants with them. They violated the king's command and risked their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I issue a decree that any one of my people, nation, or language who says anything offenses against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be torn from limb from limb and is made to use and his house made a garbage dump for there's no other God who is able to deliver like this. Then the king rewarded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. That's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That's quite a lengthy lesson, but what a story it tells, even especially from a, a literary, if you look at it, I wish there was an English teacher that I could talk to about this because it is, the story is developed to be told orally. And I, I probably did a very poor job of doing that, but but uh, it was, this story is, and, and the others in the first six chapters of Daniel were, remember, were oral histories of, for a long, long time. And so they would have been told by the priest in a synagogue and they would, uh, uh, they would have been done very dramatically. So, the the previous lesson was on in a conflict over food, but this lesson is about bowing to another god. How much more serious that was than the first. How do you think we could ever withstand a king like that? Imagine, if you would, that it was against the law to worship. Name some countries right off the top of your head where it is illegal to worship Christianity. And yet Christianity survived Soviet Russia. It's thriving in China. It's hidden in North Korea, but it's still there. It takes great faith, great perseverance to withstand. And the author of the Sunday School lesson today told a story about how a young couple that were serving the Hindus in Nepal used to come and stay with them when they would come stateside. And he told the husband of this couple, told the stories about in Nepal, he would sometimes follow the, the, the uh, Sherpas who would carry the people up mountains to a remote village and how often they would try to put him in a position 
where he would fall to his death. And, and yet somehow miraculously he always held on and survived. He tells about one instance when he got to a village and the people invited him to eat. And so he broke, he sat down to eat with them. What he did not know was that they had poisoned his food. And yet they were amazed by the fact that the poison had no effect on him. God again had delivered someone from persecution. So as we let's just start there and, and and that's a good place for us to begin our, our examination of the of the scripture itself. What we can say is that Nebuchadnezzar had an oversized ego that he failed to consider God's role in his position in life. Hmm. You know anybody like that? Maybe you do. Or maybe you can recognize just a little of that in our lives. So we see in verse, in verse 19 that, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar was in a rage over, over, uh, over his, these three men's failure to, to worship. Then in verse 20, we see that he, he was in, uh, we see how unbalanced he, Nebuchadnezzar was in his overkill when he, he ordered the fire to be heated seven times hotter than it normally would even to the point that it would hurt his own people that tried to that threw Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego into the fire. Do you think that he was scared of these three men because he bound them up and before they put them into the fire? I don't know. But he'd lost his some of his own men by by ordering that. We see here the lit the uh, the literary side of this story in the in the way that they kept repeating Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over and over and over to impress upon us. <clears throat> so, and we see the build up, the uh, tension as it as it builds throughout this part of the story. Is God going to save them? Will God save them? You know, sometimes we lose faith when we pray for something and it's not answered the way we want to. We need to be careful about that. We need to be careful that that doesn't, because God is with us, but he sees a lot bigger picture than we do. And he wants us he knows he wants what's best for us. And so sometimes he doesn't answer a prayer. Or maybe he has a different reason for answering the prayer than we can see. But we need to remember that even though sometimes, unlike this time, when this persecution was, was stopped and was not permitted, that God has a reason for what he does. Back to my story that I told you earlier, the young the the missionary said that when he asked told the family that he was staying there when he asked for prayers not to stop the persecution but to be able to withstand it to be able to live through it and thereby have his have his life be a reflection of God there's several places in the in the Old Testament where God used fire to hone and to, to use, to, to harden or winnowing of his people. And that's repeated over and over as a way to, to the chaff will burn away and the wheat will be left. And uh, so we see these continuing, uh, the fire is, is a, is a process of, of purification in it and so that's kind of what we see here Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego would not obey the king Nebuchadnezzar and withstood the circumstances but they did say that even if they were not persecuted 
that they would under that they would not yield to to his power. As we go through the lesson today, let's read some of the questions that we had. What does Nebuchadnezzar's response to hearing that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bow down to him, what does it tell you about him as an individual? that he was impetuous, that he was beginning stages of dementia. I don't know, but he was, he, he, he certainly reacted in a way that was not, that was, that was not rational. How about mad with power? Does that, does that thought come to you? He hated being disobeyed. Then what do you think about how he acted after the fact? Did you notice a change in him? Mm, yeah, he began to realize, but it doesn't. he hadn't learned his lesson yet. And if you will read chapter four, you'll find out that he does, that he learns his lesson a little better. What have we learned about the God of Israel? God protects the faithful. is more powerful than any king and doesn't always keep his faithful servants out of the fire, but walks with them through it. He's not going to always heal every heal illness, but he'll walk with us all the way through it. The purpose of this lesson is to help God's people endure in faith despite the consequences. However, as the three Israelite youths were aware, God does not always physically protect those who are faithful. A simple understanding of faithfulness, it brings God's physical protection. When it fails to bring God's personal, it drives personal protection, it drives people away from God if they're not very careful. When the promise of deliverance is un, unfulfilled, this history was given, this was given to the people because of the terrible persecution they were undergoing at that time, which was roughly about 165 BC. They were being, the Jews were being terribly persecuted at this time by, by the uh, Romans, and so that was the reason that it finally got wrote down so it could be passed around as this was part of the oral history. Daniel is part of the oral history of, of Judea. And we're getting, we're ready now to read the closing prayer, but before we do, I wanna to read to you uh, from the student's book the last paragraph in the book, because I think it's so important for us to hear that. Listen, God is still the God of deliverance from life's most difficult and trying situations. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's story hails this truth for all to hear. Crisis will always be part of life, but God's promise to the faithful remains. Take a few moments this week and reflect on a crisis in your life and how your faith in God helped you to overcome the situation. God brought you out of the fire. It will be a meditation well worth it. And now let's read our closing prayer collectively. Paint located on page 76 of our student Sunday school book. Lord, we worship you as the God who meets us with comfort and peace in life's most trying times. Help us to hold on to your promise so that we might see your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope this week that you will take time to reflect on the lesson from today. And thank you for watching.